Gosport Ferry Limited has operated the crossing between Gosport and Portsmouth since 1883 and has gone through many changes in that time. More recently, both Portsmouth and Gosport have also enjoyed major refurbishments to their harbour waterfronts. On the Gosport side, the Falklands Gardens area, dedicated to the service personnel who lost their lives during the Falklands conflict of 1982, forms a centrepiece which gives visitors an unrivalled view over the harbour. The Millennium Walkway now provides access along a huge waterfront path, stretching from the Explosion Museum at Hardway, which houses one of the most comprehensive armaments displays in England, through to Hasler Lake, which features the remains of the ramparts which originally enclosed the town. Gosport now hosts fashionable marinas at Camper and Nicholson and Hasler. A solar clock by Trinity Green gives a unique insight into how time was measured before watches existed. Gosport has a thriving market, which takes over the whole of the town centre on Tuesdays and Saturdays, combining occasionally with a visiting French market. A bright, modern enclosed terminal serves to shelter passengers as they wait to board one of the three ferries that ply between up to a third of a mile between the ferry terminals and saves over 28 miles of return car travel. On the Portsmouth side, Gunwharf Quay is a major shopping centre and cinema complex sitting impressively beside the Royal Dockyard, home to the Victory, Mary Rose and the Warrior. Making our way into the Solent, you can see the Spithead Forts built by Lord Palmerston around 1860. Made out of granite and steel, with walls measuring some 15 feet thick, this is one of 26 built in a chain surrounding our towns, including Fort Gilkicker, built on the edge of Stokes Bay, which boasts one of the largest shingle beaches in England, and was the site of the Normandy invasion embarkation of thousands of Allied troops. On our right is the historic village of Alverstoke. As we are fortunate enough to be here during Cow's Week, the already busy port is further besieged by a legion of diverse craft, vying for position as we make our approach from the western side of Cow's Harbour. This array of fabulous waterfront properties is known as Millionaire's Row. Making our approach to Red Funnel's West Cow's Terminal, we pass the home of the Royal Yacht Squadron, reputedly the most exclusive nautical club in existence. Already berthed alongside our jetty is Red Funnel's latest fast commuter ferry, Red Jet 3. latest development to take advantage of Gosport's unique waterfront areas. All submariners know Gosport, as it was at HMS Dolphin that all new recruits received their training. So it is only natural that the Royal Naval Submarine Museum should be housed here. Home to Holland 1, the mother of all modern submarines, the museum also has HMS Alliance on permanent display, and there are frequent guided tours. Gosport Ferry has for over a hundred years been carrying passengers across the harbour and almost three and a half million people annually make the crossing. At the entrance to the naval base, the crowds are queuing to buy their tickets. For years, Navy Days were an annual part of local life, with thousands of visitors flocking to the area to view the majesty of the English fleet. But with a reduction in the armed services, the event was put on hold, until now. And by the look of the thousands of people who have arrived to be ferried between the two bases, there is no lack of interest. The naval dockyard, which dates back to Henry VIII, together with the naval base, occupy a vast area, with many jetties, basins, dry docks, 
workshops and storehouses to accommodate the Navy's needs. The first of the ships in port is the Libertad. Built in Argentina at Rio Santiago in 1963, she holds the record for the fastest crossing of the North Atlantic by a square rigger, set in the 1970s and is currently used as a sail training ship. This is a three-masted Barkentine Iskra, built in 1962 belonging to the Polish Navy. Astern of her is the Malcolm Miller, one of our own sail training ships. Just arriving for the festival is the Matthew, an exact replica of the original which sailed across the North Atlantic 300 years ago. We are now passing the King's Stairs jetty. The steps would have been used by Nelson and his officers on the way to the Battle of Trafalgar. And you can see the officers' sleeping quarters as we pass by the rear of HMS Victory. The warm summer evening heralds the start of our night cruise around the harbour. The bustle of the day has turned into the sophisticated sounds of the evening, and the boats take on a new form as the slowly gathering dusk gives soft silhouettes to the ship's outlines. So sit back for a while and enjoy taking in the sights as they unfold.
As we start to make our turn here, next on the right hand side of the vessel, you will see the commercial side of Portsmouth at the Albert Johnson and Flathouse Quays, and also the Continental Ferry Port. Portsmouth itself has now become the second busiest ferry port, second only to Dover. The ferry service to the continent operates to La Havre, Cannes, Cherbourg and St Malo. If you wish to travel further afield, you can now also travel to the northern Spanish port of Bilbao 